Hello, and welcome to another episode of Making Sense of Social Media. My name is Lori Clausen, and this podcast is intended for the small business owner or the person who's doing social media for a company that just has a lot of questions and challenges, just feel like you're not sure where to turn. The intention behind this podcast is to give you those answers. Today, we have an amazing guest. His name is Sheldon. I've known Sheldon for a few years now. He is a fellow Canadian agency owner. He's so talented. He's so gifted. He's so smart. And he has so many amazing stories. Welcome, Sheldon. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to those watching and listening today? Hi, my name is Sheldon Payne. I'm the owner of Newfound Marketing. We're a um, lead generation company in the uh, far eastern part of Canada and St. John's, Newfoundland. Uh, we help um, home service businesses and health and wellness businesses generate leads for, for their business. Um, that includes um, making sure that we've got good social media campaigns, email marketing campaigns, um, a lot of lead generation through paid media campaigns. Um, and then also helping brands um, use search engine optimization to be able to generate leads for the company as well. Lead generation is a topic that I think most people don't talk about enough. Like they don't understand that it's it's the core of your business. <laughs> so it, that's yeah. that's so awesome that that that's a service that you provide. Just jump right into it. What, in your opinion, and again, expertise are the main goals of creating and dis distributing social media content? Great question. Um, I think the goals definitely differ per business. Um, for some businesses that if you're trying to get foot traffic into the, through the door, uh, the goal of social is to be able to let people be aware of who you are, what you offer, um, and perhaps even a small community. Because I think a lot of small businesses, um, thinking more like restaurants, local restaurants, coffee shops, et cetera, uh, there's typically a community that's kind of around those businesses. And that might be, you know, if you go to the same time every day of the week, you probably see some familiar faces, begin to have conversations and chats. So I think the purpose for social and, and that type of business is just continuing to be top of mind and to create awareness of who you are and what's happening. And again, to kind of like to foster that community. Now, in terms of like different businesses, um, you know, if you're an e-commerce brand, as an example, and you're selling a product, you know, if it's a physical product, then you might be using that more about, you know, letting people be more aware of new products that you have. Uh, taking feedback from products that you have to be able to make adjustments, sales and promotions, obviously is going to be a big driver. Um, and that's going to be, again, through, again, elevating brand awareness, but it might be a mix between elevating the brand. But then also, if you're doing brand awareness, you also want to have some sales at some point. And then lastly, um, you know, have other businesses, as I mentioned earlier, about from a lead generation perspective, uh, the goal there from for generating content and distributing content might be more about educating a prospective client with maybe a problem that they're looking to solve and just letting that, you know, letting that prospective client know as they're scrolling through their feed, whether it's uh, through Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, or the number of social media channels that we have today. Uh, this is a problem. So many, right? <laughs> I think every, yeah, every is like just to keep going and growing and growing. Um, but there's also the ones that are very stable, obviously like Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok now is becoming more stable. Um, I think the one too that probably most people don't consider to be a social channel, but we do, is email. Uh, we oh. actually consider email as a we approach it um, email yeah. like a social like a social network. Do you so for your business? Would you say email is is a primary driver for for getting clients? Uh, not for not for our business as such. Oh, okay, um, but a lot ones of, that a lot of clients that you work with. Yeah, yeah. It's email is again. It's um, you know, way that we approach it is that we, you know, you're learning, you can you're reaching people who either know who you are, so they know they can trust you already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So maybe they haven't purchased. Uh, maybe they're waiting. Um, but if you take a lot of the content that we're publishing through the social networks, um, a lot of that content sometimes is being seen by prospective clients. Maybe it's someone who doesn't know. You know, they might have followed you a couple of years ago. Maybe you don't. You know, maybe there's not a need. But email is just an extension of social uh, that we right. want to be able to use. So again, what we really like about using email is and treating it a lot like social is that we're able to see, you know, the the our list continues to grow. Um, it's ours, unlike other social channels that yes. you don't own. Uh, so it's yours. You can control it. If you see someone on the list that 
is not going to be a buyer, perhaps a competitor. You can remove them from your list as well. Um, Right. you get to see who opens. You get to see even like your VIP. So people who open on a regular basis, but also people who might uh, purchase on a regular basis if you're an e-commerce brand. So we like to think of social or email as another social channel. Um, and if you approach it that way, you know, you can send out a lot of emails, same as you would a lot of social posts. Um, you already have the idea for a social post, so this is just extending that reach to people who Yeah. already know, like, and trust you. That is really excellent advice. Listeners, start emailing. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the other thing that we really like about using like email as an extension um, of your social is that you can segment your email campaigns, right? So Yes. if you have, you can do VIP, you know, VIP social posts that goes out to an exclusive group uh, that might be, you know, repeat buyers or frequent buyers. Um, if you have a target market um, that's, you know, restricted geographically, then you can use the email list to make sure your emails are only going to go out to people who are potential buyers. Um, people Right. that will be out of, you know, with social, you don't really have that much, as much control. So you can have, you know, if you're a, a local co coffee shop that's in St. John's, Newfoundland, um, you, you know, you can have people who follow you from, you know, across the, across Canada, across the U.S., across the globe. But the likelihood of them coming through your door every single day would be very rare. Here's a random question or sort of random, but would you say that you design a social media post the same way that you would design an email in terms of wording? Would you word things the same way or is it a completely different animal? Um, it's very similar, same as you, you know, if you're, if you're in the social space, um, you know, there's usually kind of two practices. One is you post the same thing across each channel. Um, and then I think I would kind of maybe set that up if you're just kind of just starting out or you're start for time, that might be the approach that you take. Um, and obviously as you kind of have more time to do more of your social, you understand your social more, um, you would begin to tailor the messaging and maybe the image, like the dimension, or maybe even have a video or, or the caption um, Right. per, per channel and email is kind of treated in the same way. So you're just taking the idea and then you'll adjust that idea in terms of how you're going to promote it. Yeah, I like that. Let's move on to the next uh, topic. And that is um, measuring effectiveness of a social of social media content, and maybe your email, you want to speak on that as well. And are there metrics that you consider? Do you also use tools to measure that effectiveness? Just a great question. Probably the most one that we like to use is reach. Um, you know, you meet, you, meet, you meet a lot of folks and they will talk about, you know, it's the number of likes that a post get or the engagement rate of a post. Um, and then, but we like to look at reach. And the reason why we like to look at reach is because, you know, I don't like every single post when I'm scrolling through my feed. I still see it. it. It still captures that snapshot in my mind. And then I see people on a more regular basis, that brand awareness that I mentioned earlier is still there. So using reach as a key metric across all channels um, is super important because um, even, you know, for your listeners out there, how many times have you seen a business that's posted something, or maybe you saw something from friends and family where you saw the post you went past it and you didn't like it, but then maybe you see that person two or three days down the road or you would talk to them somewhere and you'll ask them like, oh, like how did that event go? Or, oh, I realized it was your birthday the other day. You know, they didn't necessarily like or comment on it, but they're still seeing it. So that's why we kind of value reach as being probably one of the more important metrics. And reach is something that you can determine from backend analytics, correct? Yeah, so we we have a couple of tools. Um, one of the one of the tools that we use for our agency is called Aorca. Um, it's actually a local company. Like the the office is Oh. not very far from ours, um, and they started here in St. John's, and now they they're growing. Um, we really like it for from a collaboration perspective, and they actually provide some some good reporting that allows us to see the the, the amount of reach um, that we have. So Right. we can combine that reach to be you know Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, X. Um, LinkedIn, so we can kind of combine the total reach that we have. Um, and reach is also important because uh, depending on the platforms, like some platforms may have more reach or better reach than others. Um, but Right. also just because I'm only, you know, I'm only posting to Facebook, but I might be on Facebook and then I might see the same post again on LinkedIn. I may see it on TikTok. I may see it on Instagram. So therefore the touch points that you have for 
a prospective client or customer, you've got multiple touch points because people are seeing that you're posting on multiple networks. Right. Ayorka, can you spell that for me? I'd like to look that up. Yep. Yeah. Um, just hey, H E Y. Oh, and then okay. Yeah, and then orca, just like the like the whale. Yep. Oh, okay. Hey, orca. Sorry, my I heard sorry. a. No, it's a, oh, here we go. All Canadian. Sorry. No, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> We're both Canadian, by the way, listeners. <laughs> Excellent advice. Reach is so important. And I, you know, I think so many people are stuck on getting that engagement and getting the likes and the comments and like all of it is important, but yeah, absolutely. If we have zero reach or limited reach, nothing else is going to happen. And another point on another point on reach too, um, this kind of goes back to a debate, you know, obviously with social and a lot of marketing. I think, you know, somebody asks you a question in marketing, the answer is always it depends. Um it's never <laughs> yes or no, it's always it depends. Um yeah. so I think in when it comes to measuring reach, again, there's the people who will post like say once a day, uh, versus people who will post like 15 times a day. Mm -hmm. Um so then when you look at reach, you you know, you get the one post that goes out and it's got a shelf life that, you know, might, depending on the quality of the post, it could be a few hours or it could be a few minutes. And then after that, if you post several times a day, several times a day, all of those would say the reaches for those, if it's 100, 200, 300, if you do that 10, 15 times a day, all of those 200, 300, 400, you know, for each post in the reach, that's a lot, you'd begin to see, you know, that reach becomes a lot. And sometimes right. it might be... Uh, with, you know, some a client or customer seeing you post twice a day, right? And, and again, for your listeners, for yourself, uh, for business owners, think about, you know, when you're scrolling through your feeds, more than likely you're seeing some of the same people over and over and over um, is because they post frequently, right? So mm -hmm. frequency frequency is, is also important. Frequency and consistency um, are super important when you're thinking about social. Well, that's a great segue into another question, and that is the great debate over quality versus quantity in terms of social media content. Where is your overall strategy or, or thinking in on that question? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> we should have t-shirts made. It depends. <laughs> it depends, yeah. You know our marketer when the answer is always depends. Um, so good. I love it. <laughs> but I think, again, it, it depends on the network. It depends on the business, um, how much time they have as well. So mm. I'll, I'll start with network. Um, you know, the way, if you're posting on a platform that's really fast paced, like X or formerly Twitter, uh, that might be a space where you can, the quality might be a little bit less because you're trying to increase the frequency uh, that mm -hmm. you have and the, re and the reach of a post uh, the shelf life is very short. So therefore that the quality of that might be a little bit lower. Um, if you go in more of the B2B space and, you're look, and we're looking at something like LinkedIn, the quality of that, because you're in a professional network, you want that quality probably be to be up a couple of levels and something that you might post through, through X. Um, and because that shelf life might be a couple of days or even a week, um, quite often, I know personally, I'll look through a LinkedIn, I'll go through the LinkedIn feed and I'll see a post, but that was posted four days ago, five days ago, and it's still getting, you know, it's still gaining momentum and reach. Um, so therefore you can, you know, the, the quality of that you want to be a bit better. Uh, Facebook's kind of in between. Um, again, I'll mm. see Facebook posts that sometimes will be, you know, three, four, five, six days um, in the past, you kind of really sometimes you see this if it's um, a current event and you'll see like something that's posted and oh, like that was like that happened like last week, but it's still yeah. showing up in the feed. Um, but again, I think it's uh, the quality. I think now one and also depend. And so quality, it's important depending on network. Uh, the second part of that, I think it also depends on the the time that you have as well. So if you have time to create more quality posts, then absolutely give that a shot. Um, but if you don't, I think you can also um, like always be testing. So you can post maybe some some content yeah. that might not have the quality that some other content might, um, and it might resonate. And one way to use that in social is if you kind of log your social content and what you're doing. So let's say, you know, you create a post or maybe the quality is not as good as you want it to be, but you still wanted to get that message out. 
So you post that today, and depending on the type of question or the type of post that it is, uh, maybe in two to three months from now, you come back and you look at that post again and say, okay, look, I posted that, but now that did well, you know, reach, potentially likes, comments, et cetera. Um, then you can go back and you can take that and like, can I repurpose that? Like, can I do that again? And maybe turn this, you know, the post that maybe the quality was a bit lower. Like, can I improve the video quality on it? Um, if it's something that was an image, can I change or improve the image? Can I up, can I update or upgrade the the caption? So I think with a lot of the content that we create, you can always like test quickly for the quality. Yeah. For the quality maybe is a little bit lower, but if it resonates, then you can come back again and then you can do it again and again and again. I often think of it like um, if you if you have a blog or you know you're um, you're creating blog content like the first draft that you create. Some people will wait till it's like perfectly finished and they'll they'll post it. Um, another approach is to create the first draft, take it, publish it. Some people will read it, then you might get feedback on the post, but then you get the feedback and then you can go back and you can update it. And or maybe depending on the post, if you look at it from an SEO perspective, the post goes out, you begin to get some traction, um, but then you can go back and again, you see some of the keywords that people are using, how long is the on the site, and then you go back and you do a second version and you improve upon that version. So the quality versus quantity posts of the social, you can kind of approach it in the same way. That's such great advice. I'm going to go back and look at some of my older posts and, and try and repurpose them. One of the areas where I kind of probably see it the most is Instagram as an example, you know, and again, depending on the the view uh, from an Instagram perspective, you know, how, when is the last time you, you know, found someone new on Instagram as an example? I'm like, mm. I, I wonder what they posted two years ago. <laughs> like, I, I'm, That'd I'm be like, fun I'm, to I'm, look. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, and I think we kind of get into that kind of space where we continue to create new content create new content and create new content right where sometimes you know especially if you're a business owner or and you're kind of like starved for time um right and you don't have the resources and like kind of curious what i you know what can i post quite often you can actually go back through older content and with, and you can find something again that oh yeah that's still relevant today mm -hmm. as it was two years ago three years ago um and you know maybe my account like the number of people have grown since then again they're not going back and looking at, at a post that was two or three years old so i can take that post and one i can either just completely just republish it as it is or mm -hmm. again i can go back and i can just polish it up a little bit if i need to and update it and send it back out one it's a nice refresher for anyone that's following you and have been following you for quite a while um, right. you just might you know rethink of something oh yeah no i haven't did that in the last two years i should call you know, et cetera, like X business now and get that done. Um, or two, people who haven't, who didn't see this post from two years ago because they only just started following you recently, uh, they haven't seen it either. So for them, it's new. It's, exactly. it's old to you because you're in the business and you live it, you live it every day. I, and sometimes I get questions like, well, I've already posted that or I've already talked about that before. And I think we as marketers and especially new marketers or or maybe small business owners who are just so in their business that they're not really understanding marketing just yet is that we have to give that touch point or that message like a minimum, what is it, 15 times now, 20, who knows what the actual number is, but we need to like continually tell them what we do, who we serve, you know, who, what we're providing, that kind of thing. So those continually repurposed pieces of content is an excellent idea. And people evolve too. Like I know even in, for my own self, like my business model has changed significantly over the last year. And so it's, it's brand new messaging for me. So I feel like people will know that I've I've changed gears a little bit, but no, like I have to continue to to get the word out of of what I'm doing, and that goes across the board for any kind of business owner, but particularly small business owners who are, you know, they're working a side hustle or they're trying to get their passion project off the ground or that kind of thing. They're wearing five hats. <clears throat> yeah, the owner of the key the key business offering, HR, accounting, etc yeah uh, from there so when you're time starved it's it's nice to be able to think about 
you know, just even creating this basket of ideas uh, that you oh, have. I like and that. It does, and it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a hundred ideas as an example, you know, yeah. just think about, think about, okay, well, I need like 10, put your hand on the basket and then how can I change this up from the last time that I did it? And great. Now I've got my post. Um, you can do that again. That's a and, great idea. So, and that's one thing you can do. Another one that I've been um, mentioning recently to a lot of folks, especially people who are maybe not comfortable with video um, because obviously, you know, we're, we're seeing more and more video through YouTube shorts, Facebook reels, you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that might be nice to try, and I've done this with several of my clients recently where, you know, even if you don't, even if you, the intention is not to post it to social, um, it's just to, you know, take your idea, get in front of a camera and record it and document it and document it for the time, but don't think about posting it to social. Think about, you know, looking at, looking back at that potentially four years in a row, five years in a row, 10 years in a row. So now you're going to have that video. Now, complete bonus, if you can take that content and you can turn it into a social post or a blog post or et cetera. Yeah. Uh, but it's great practice to be able to look back and like, oh, yeah, I remember having that idea back in 2012. Watch it. Oh, maybe I can do that again. Well, and speaking of, you know, the business owner who's wearing all the hats, what is your take on advertising on social media? I'm a big fan of paid media. I always have been um, yeah. looking back, like this is 20 <laughs> years now that I've been in the paid media space. 20 and years. 20, 20 wow. Years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Facebook didn't exist. Well, I think it may have existed, but not like we, like we know it. Yeah. Um, back then, but I'm a big fan of, of paid media. And I think for whether it's a small business owner, you know, even the big enterprise, um, et cetera, when it comes to, so I'll just give you an example. So let's say you write a social post and it begins to have some reach and it gets some momentum, right? But you're also star for time and you don't know what I'm going to like, what I'm going to post tomorrow. Like this one is doing quite well. So yeah. that might be one where if that post begins to take off, um, that's when you can go and put some money behind it. So even more people can see it. And the really good thing about using a platform um, like Facebook or, or most people use it like Meta is that if you do the boosting, I'll call it the boosting, but if you're going to amplify a social post, um, the good thing is that if you know your audience and who the intended audience is, you can actually use the budget or the budget that you want to go and make sure that more people of who your target audience is see it. And because it's already organically, you know, getting comments and reach and engagement, you know, it's, you know, it's working. This, this just allows you to amplify that reach even further. Mm -hmm. um, and that might, and then all of a sudden, well, maybe I can let this, I can let this post stay there for a week or 10 days, or depending on, again, like if it's an evergreen post, it can stay longer um, if it's something that's more short term, then, you know, it might only have a shelf life of a couple of days. Um, right. But using paid to amplify the the time that you're putting in for some social, very big, like, go go for it, like do that. Definitely worth it. Yeah. Well, I have one last question for you, Sheldon, and that is, can you offer or what are what is your idea of some best practices tips around engaging content. So I know we've talked a lot about reach, but how do we get people to comment and like and share? So this one I'm actually going to flip back kind of like the other way. So okay. When we use social like as a business and we're creating content, a lot of the time we're really thinking about like, you know, what can I do in my business? Like what can I post? What can I do? Um and I think a lot of times you kind of flip it the other way and begin okay. to scroll through your begin to scroll through your feed um and ask yourself like oh i can answer that question or i can add value to that and just start taking the time to go and create the responses um on other people's content and contributing oh, contributing yeah. valuable content and then it may not happen tomorrow it may not be next week it might not be next month um, but if you continue to do that then eventually as you're posting more of your content it will resonate with those people as well um, and the other thing that I really like about doing that is that as you're going through and going through that practice, you often begin, oh, that was, I, I can answer that question. I can probably, I'm going to put that one in my basket. Like I'm going right. to, I can turn, I can turn that into my own post next week, like, because I've already answered that question. That's so, such a fantastic answer. I love that. 
it's easy to do. You can, you know, whether you're watching a hockey game, waiting for a plane, <laughs> you know, wh whatever it is that you're, that you're doing in the course of the day, it doesn't take long. Um, right. But you just scroll through your feed. And some of the places, again, like if you just think, um, even if it's like the business that maybe it's a business that's a compliment to yours, as an example. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you, you scroll through a post and they post something and there's, there's like zero comments. Yeah. Right. But then you make that comment. Right. Right. Like Which, sudden, yeah. You, you really captured their attention. They're a compliment yes. to you. Yeah. And then like, oh my God, like, you know, here's Sheldon and Lori again commenting on this post. Or, yeah. You know, and you begin to, okay, great. And you do that three, four, five times. Um, so then they would begin to comment back on your post. Right. Oh, I love that strategy so much. That is definitely something worth spending time on, like taking the time to do that. Absolutely. I'm going to add one little, <laughs> one little added piece to this one as well. And this goes back to part of the, it depends on, you know, the approach. Um, so in many cases, especially if it's a business, they'll, or a personal brand, someone in the personal brand, they typically are posting maybe the same post across networks. Mm -hmm. So if you make a response on X, pretty sure you can go and have a look on Instagram or Facebook because they posted the same content and you can actually take the comment and the value that you've added and post it across all three platforms. So now they really begin to notice you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is honestly something I've never practiced and yeah. definitely feel like I should be. That's yeah. such great advice. And everybody has time, like you said, sitting on the couch watching hockey, which for the watcher and listener, Sheldon and I are both big hockey fans. <laughs> and <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's something that is so easily done and we just need to take the time to do that. So, and everybody can do that. Wow. I'm, you have offered so, so many great tips today, Sheldon. Tell everybody where they can find you or how they can reach you. Most of the content you'll find will be, you know, will be on my own personal brand, um, which if you just even just visit like SheldonPayne.com, you'll see some content there. Most channels still Sheldon Payne or an underscore, et cetera. Um, and then there's our company, Newfound Marketing, again, um, Newfound and then Marketing. And uh, you can find a lot of our content there. Most of the content is going to be through LinkedIn and Facebook. Those are the two platforms of our choice that we like to be able to publish. Um, as much as we would love to be able to do content on other channels, those are the two that we find are quite busy for us. Um, and then if you are visiting our website, then by all means, take a minute to come and also join our email newsletter, uh, which you can kind of get some of the additional tips and content that we, that we publish. Thank you so much. This has been such a treat. And I'm just very, very grateful to have you on the podcast today. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be able to connect after all these yeah. years of being able to go back and forth through social again. I hope you got so much out of this episode. I know I did. Every time I speak with Sheldon, I learn something new. Speaking of learning, if you are looking for your very own marketing coach and social media coach, I have a group coaching session that launches again on May the 1st. It's a six-week group coaching experience where we meet one time a week for six weeks. But if group coaching isn't your thing, I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So be sure to visit the link in the description of this video. I'd love to connect with you and hopefully become your marketing mentor. We'll see you next time.